Sonic. How I hate him. And all of that loathing has been focused into this invincible instrument of destruction. Every defeat, every humiliation at the Hedgehog's hands will be returned a thousandfold by my unstoppable creation. This is my dream come true. With this invention, I can expand the Eggman Empire across the globe and conquer the world! Guys, two Sonic games in one year. Why are we so hashtag blessed? And both these games couldn't be any more different. Indeed. Sonic Mania was a fantastic 2D love letter to the original series. But this new game, Sonic Forces, is a more modern mix of 3D and 2D design. Compared to the classic platforming in Sonic Mania, Sonic Forces has some big red shoes to fill. Let's start with the story. In Sonic Forces, Eggman is at it again. Hell-bent on world domination, he has recruited a bunch of Sonics to achieve his fiendish task, such as Metal and Shadow, my favourite. And, spoiler alert, Eggman wins, thanks to newcomer Infinite Sonic. Huh? Huh? Whoa, this guy is faster than Sonic! Powered by a strange phantom ruby, Infinite easily beats Sonic, who is then trapped on Eggman's moon base. In space! No! In fact, the phantom ruby is so strange, it pulls in a classic Sonic from another dimension! Oh. A convenient and welcome plot twist to give us some old-school Sonic 2D levels. <laughs> yes, I have no problem with that, Darren. Old-school Sonic looks beautiful. The remaining Sonic team get together to form a resistance, rescue Sonic, and stop Eggman and Infinite from destroying the world. Hmm, the plot is nonsense. Uh, for example, most missions require you to simply run from one side of the map to the other, which hardly allows for much storyline development. Even so, I was impressed with the dialogue peppered throughout each level, and the cutscenes are exciting and well rendered. Still nonsense, though. Yes, I think you need to embrace the nonsense to enjoy it. But what's most exciting about this game is for the first time ever, you can actually make your own Sonic, kind of. Bajo, yours is weird. Weird awesome. Hey, don't be scared. This is your moment to shine. Fine. Hmm. There's a bunch of different Sonic types you can create, and they each have their own bonuses. You will still play as Sonic from time to time, but a lot of the action is with your own Sonic avatar, who can use a funky weapon to blast enemies out of the way. Every now and then, your avatar will team up with Sonic! Uh, however, these sections feel a little awkward, as they try to cater to both Sonic's abilities and whatever weapon your avatar might be using. We reviewed this on PS4, and it is a great-looking game with lots of detail and things always happening in the backgrounds. The action moves fast as you dash attack enemies and grind and swing about a variety of crazy fast levels. 3D Sonic is an acquired taste, though, don't you think, Bajo? I do think, Rand. Personally, I've never been a massive fan of the 3D Sonic style. I just find it a bit jolty how you dash attack and how the camera moves so fast. I just find it a bit hard to keep up with it. Give me the old 2D drop and spin any day. Mm. 3D Sonic gameplay has improved over the years, but it is a very different style of platforming. Some levels in Sonic Forces are better than others. It's towards the end of this fairly short game that you start to see the weaknesses in the level design. The difficulty increases due to the game simply being unpolished, rather than levels requiring you to have more skill. I totally agree, Darren. However, I found myself playing more and more just to get the costume unlocked, though. That was almost worth it for me. There are so many of them, and I had to have them all. Just when I think your characters can't get any weirder, you find a way, Barjo. Thanks, Rad. Overall, I didn't have a great time with this game, and it wasn't the gameplay, it's actually the interpretation of Sonic and Knuckles and all of the characters and the voice acting. It just doesn't sit right with me. No, wait, it's something else. Gotta scan him and figure this out. And just after how good Sonic Mania was earlier in the year, I found this particular Sonic adventure a bit forgettable. So I'm giving it two out of five rubber chickens. Yeah, it's certainly a strange experience for people who aren't already fans of these characters and this style of Sonicking, but there were some exciting moments. I'm giving it two and a half out of five rubber chickens.